screaming. Yep. Uh, calling to order the German Village Commission meeting on October 6, 2021. Next business meeting is Tuesday, October 19, 2021 at 12 p.m. 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Here. Next hearing is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021 at 4 p.m. Again at 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Swearing in of staff, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Introduction of commissioners present on my left. Jeff Ferriel. Uh, Netfield Deputy Chair, I'm standing in for uh, Anthony Hart. Anthony Hartney, thank you. Sharissa Durst. Right, well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so one item public forum. We have four commissioners, which meets our quorum tonight. We have two people out for various reasons. We have, we are going to lose our quorum at 6.30. We will at that point, uh, shortly there before, continue any other uh, applications that we have not gotten to, we will try to get through as many as we can before 625. And we will try to reschedule those before the next meeting in November, depending on availability of commission members and availability of this room. That does not mean it will be four o'clock. We will go for whatever time that we can get everyone together and give everyone due public legal notice of that meeting to get through our applications. We apologize, um, but circumstances happened. Um, it's where the times that we're in is part of what the problem is. So with that being said, let's move on to the first item. Uh, thank you very much. Um, approval of minutes from last meeting. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same for nay. Approved. Um, approval of staff approvals, ratification thereof. Are there any recusals? Brent, you're good. Carissa, you're good. Forgot one or check. Your signature, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Do I have a motion to ratify the staff approvals? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Same in nay. It passes. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us on track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Item number one has been moved to staff approval. Okay. Item number two, 183 East Whittier Street. Uh, installing stop covers. To a proposed work description and repair grade system on each elevation, build new stop gutter system on each elevation. Stop gutter will be wood framed with a new 26 gauge bonderized steel liner. Install new e vaporant and hand solder at all seams. Staff analysis application is in response to a code violation. At the October business meeting, the commission requested additional information and more detailed drawings on the construction of the stop gutter as well as how it would be anchored and supported on the east eave of the roof, which the applicant has provided. Staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval of any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificates. Staff recommended conditions that stop gutters to be installed on both east and west elevations. Basis of staff recommendations. CC 3116.11 standards of alteration number six. You raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Would you state your name, please? Sean Sheffield. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, my um, the contractor isn't here. Um, I'm actually in real estate. I don't deal with, I deal with, you know, I know box guns, <laughs> nothing about this right here. Um, so, yeah, I'm surprised he's not here right now, but he's not. So, I can't really. Like I said, talk intelligently about it. I know you guys have the drawings, and this is what it's supposed to look like. So basically, this right here mimics the drawings, and it 
kind of goes over detail. Can you turn it sideways for us? Yeah. I'd like to see it on the side. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, just no, this the side right here. Switch see it, like it from the side. So we can see it from the side. Okay. So it's like a profile. Okay. Kind of like this. Yep, that'll work. Okay. Here, here. Yeah, please. Yeah. To us. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Brent? Yeah. Any concerns? How is this? Yeah, you don't, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, it's it all right there. Drawing. Yeah. It's got blocking in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not going to have this cracked piece of wood. It's what I just cracked. Correct, piece correct, of wood. correct. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty stable to me. <laughs> this guy comes very, very highly recommended from everybody, pretty much in German Village, because a lot of people won't even do anything like this. It has to this nail the roof? The right there. locking nail. Lock, in the lock up the locking. Yeah, yeah, it's already lock, it's just missing yeah, some lock up. Yeah. And that was our concern. Yeah. Gotcha. Any questions? No. Any concerns? No. Yep. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, I move on item number GB-21-10-020-183 is East Goodyear Street to approve the application as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? It passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number three. And we have someone here for item number three. 43 East Back Street. Yes. Can we come up front, please? Two people. Would you raise your right hand, please? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Yes. State your names. Jennifer Corey. Brian Bellman. Thank you. Morgan. Number three, GB 2110-21. Proposed work description, install new radon system to code according to Ohio radon mitigation standard and all legal industry standards. Entire system is made of four inch schedule of 40 white PVC with a radon fan attached. Installed a sub slab depressurization system into the basement slab. The pipe goes above the closet roof line by one foot. Exhaust stack is mounted to home with galvanized clamps and screws on one side. Exhaust piping is to be painted to match the existing siding color on the house so as to blend in visually with the building surface as much as possible. Staff review at the October business meeting, the commission asked for confirmation on why the radon mitigation system wasn't able to be installed further back on the side of the house. The applicant has responded stating that the exterior foundation on the rear and far west corner of the home is even with the ground outside, where the pipe currently is installed is as far back as it can go. The crawl space is very tight where the pipe has been installed currently and ends before the gas meter. The back part of the home is inaccessible or on a slab. Staff recommends approval with any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff to review and approval prior to issuance of certificate. On the conditions that the PVC piping to be painted to match the color of the exterior siding, the proposed work is consistent with CC 3116-18 approvals required. Letter C. Yeah. Thank you, George. Do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, commissioners, I just want to make some clarification. I'm the former owner. This was installed as a result of a real estate transaction. This is the current owner. Um, I, I think we're both here to say that, well, I'm here to say that I, I do apologize to the commission for not getting this pre-approved. Um, we've looked at it initially and, and erroneously as, you know, this was a self-help health and safety issue. It was more akin to, you know, gas meter, which you can see right there in the front. Recognize that that wasn't the proper procedure, but I uh, do hope that, um, you know, the fact that the radon uh, was brought well below the EPA limits um, it's a necessary appliance and that uh, I did work with and ensure that this uh, pipe band was placed as far back off the property line as possible and the most discreet area and hope that that satisfies the commission. I think Mr. Don was just here to, you know, I'll, I'll let you yeah, know. chime in. Yeah, um, you know, my girlfriend and I are very satisfied with the reduction in the radon levels. Um, very pleased with the home today and uh, appreciate the, the commission's consideration. Commissioners. 
And so when it was read that quickly, I'm not sure I fully understood why it wasn't put on the other side of the house instead of the street side of the house. Okay, so what you're seeing right there at the front of the house, that's the gas meter. The fan, you can see it's it's all the way to the back. So what you're seeing, that's that is the side of the house. That's okay. the west side of the house. It's it's um the other side of the house is where the front door is. And um, there, I, I worked with three different radon companies. Um, both of them said this was the farthest back, uh, two of them said this was the farthest back they could put it. Um, not only because the, the house is rectangular, so there's a small, um, at, the, at the sidewalk, closest to the street, there's a small basement, then there's a very tight crawl space, and then at the back of the house, that's a slab. So um, the, I guess yeah, the, the, the actual gas meter is back behind the pipe, and so they couldn't put it any closer to the gas meter. Um, the gas meter, I think I can see it. It's already been moved to the exterior of the house. Yeah, okay. and that's um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, what is that thing? Is that, the water meter. Is that just where the gas comes out and then the meter's out back? I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the third company wouldn't even get in the crawl, it's so tight. So it was really difficult for this company to get it back as far as they even did. Um, the other side of the house, there's a there's a courtyard, and that's where the landscaping is. Uh, and it would have been, you know, that, that's where the first company wanted to put it. That's absolutely not. Wait, 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 wait a minute. It could have gone on the patio, the other side of the house? Well, the east side of the house? Yeah. Where the patio is. No, no, no. That's the back of the house. And it could not have gone there because that's a slab. You know, I don't think you have pictures of the other side of the house. I don't think they were submitted. I don't like it. It's, just it's a rectangle with a short end at the street. And then the other short end is where you saw that patio. Could not have gone with where the patio is. Would have loved to have made that happen, but it was it was possible. Right, they would have to excavate the rear of the house, and it's just too tight to get that equipment in there. Uh, moreover, speaking with the radon company, they indicated that where it's placed currently, because of the airflow, they can guarantee um, the EPA limit will not be exceeded. However, if we were to move that fan, they indicated they can't make that guarantee. Um, so in my mind, it's really a health and safety issue, and where it's at presently um, is sufficient to satisfy. Yeah, I think they're getting the. So you can see, I'm not describing very well, but yeah. So where the mailbox is is where the other radon company wanted to put it, and I said absolutely not. That's not going to work for us. So yeah, that would have been more conspicuous. Absolutely, yeah. So we going to put it on the other side of the house as far back as they could. And you can see there's no alley or anything to go back. I think Mr. Don was, was saying that the, the um, uh, just to, to, to sharpen that point up a little bit, I think um, what the radon people said was, I guess theoretically you could excavate if you, you know, be, but you can't even get an excavator back there because the, the patio is. Oh, there's a potential, it's got your neighbor's property on top of it. To, to, I'm sorry. Neighbor's property? Oh, it's right there. Yeah. yeah. It's it's very tight. Yeah. The survey actually indicates that that drive encroaches on the our land slightly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're well within our property bounds. But... Okay. Yeah, it's 18 inches on from the side of the house, as I recall. Oh, well. Yeah. And I and I made sure of that too when I did work with the radon company. I mean, if 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 we have approved this as being acceptable. My one stipulation is that you paint the PVC with a paint that matches the color that is for PVC and not house paint. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're in that acceptable. The, that's acceptable. Okay. We're in communication with the radon company. They've already taken a paint sample, so we'll convey that stipulation. To yeah, it has, it has to be bondable paint. to PVC. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Yeah. So we have to note that that you are modifying the application to, to meet the condition that that just. Yes, sir. Okay. I will motion to approve. DD 2110021 as modified by the app. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Passes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks.
Application number four, 211 East Livingston Avenue. Is there anyone here for that application? Please come forward. Have a seat. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name. Brian <clears throat> Packer. Thank you, sir. Item number four, DB 21 10 Proposed work for 20, 211 East Livingston Avenue. Install three new fabric awnings, both door and two windows facing Livingston Avenue. Awnings will be black sunroll fabric, black frame with open ended sides, straight rigid mat valence across the front, name and white across the front of the valence um, installed over the front door. Staff analysis, the original application extent was a larger single awning above both windows and doors with a large G on the awning slope. Staff recommended to remove the G as well as reducing the size. Applicant agreed and sent in the current design change with the three separate awnings. At the October business meeting, commissioners noted that the height of the central awning above the door does not line up with the two awnings above the windows on the north elevation. The commission also noted that since the structure is a commercial building, then a residential neighborhood, they need to discuss how the awning installation would comply with the German Village guidelines. Staff recommendation. Staff recommended approval of any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. Staff recommended conditions to install the mortar joints. Basis of staff recommendation is German Village guidelines, page 100. Generally, homes and storefronts have flat fabric awnings that angle downward to shed water. Well, there was open ends or triangular end pieces, fixed or retraceable metal types, frames support these fabric awnings. Awning fabric can range from solid color to contrasting stripes, but should relate to the color of the building and adjacent property. Um, page 101, avoid drilling holes in these three attached frames and existing mounting holes or into mortar. Do we need to add? I don't believe so, no. Commissioners? Uh, do you intend to one day put up a sign where that hole is? I'm uh, the owner of the business or property, so I do not know. Oh. Sorry, did we clarify one of the comments during the business meeting was that they don't line up? Is the intent to, you're, you're still wanting to do it this way? They, they, they can line up if, if you prefer that. I mean, the door only, they originally thought they wanted to be able to see the transom window, but functionally it would probably be better if it was lower. And we could make them all three balances line up. I, I, my comment is the fact this is the north side of this building. So sun is not an issue on those windows. The awnings are strictly decorative. I, I, I fine with the one over the door. I get that it protects the stoop in bad weather, but I'm not for the ones over the windows. I don't know what to say to that. I mean, yeah. What's the thing about the preference? to address the building up. I it think is. architecturally it's just fine residentially. Uh, and architecturally it's fine. I mean, I understand why as a business you would want to protect the stoop. I, I get that. And I think it was originally a residential structure. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. And, and if it was a sun issue from the south yeah, or the west, I'm, I, I would be all for the awnings. I think it's be, you don't put awnings on the north sides of houses. I think it's the, akin to putting Putting uh, shades on or fake, fake uh, shutters, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Structures wouldn't have had shutters. They wouldn't have had awnings, particularly on the side. It's really decorative in a way that is not compatible with the historic right. character of the neighborhood or the structure. So I think that as a commission, we probably Sounds like we're supportive of the one over the door, but not the one over the windows. Would you be willing to modify the application to remove the one over the windows or? Yeah, I'm fine to that. If that's the case, I think we're probably all good. Looks like hearing others. I'm fine. Okay, so I will move to approve Z04GB211022 as modified by the applicant to remove. We need two awnings over the windows and to comply with all staff recommendations. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed, same sign. 
as modified, you're passed. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. Application number five, 333 East Beck Street. Is there anyone here for 33 East Beck Street? Under number six. Just a couple months in a row. I don't know who that is. Contact I have not had any contact with him since yeah. my year last time. Is it? So he would move off then? Be, yeah. 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 Recommend waiting until we get a response. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 See if anybody shows up here yet. Yeah. 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 Number six, 685 South Third Street. Oh, the city number you said they were in. Oh, yeah. Wanted to see if we could maybe continue without them potentially. So should they continue GD21092? Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, it passes. Makes it easy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, um, you initialized that and seconded. That was I. I Brent and Commissioner Farrell seconded. Got ahead of the Yeah, we're trying to move here. <laughs> yeah. Can I apologize yeah. to everybody? Item number seven, six fourteen South Pearl Street. Is there anyone here for that application? Please come forward. Thank you. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name. Amy Lowerhouse. Thank you. Number seven, GD twenty one zero nine zero three three six fourteen South Pearl Street. Proposed work description is to convert existing side porch to interior finished space. Proposed first floor addition of a sunroom, laundry, and bathroom. Remove existing non original dormers on rear of house and construct new dormers consistent with GBC guidelines. Staff analysis and review. Staff has found that the proposed rear dormer is a non original dormer, which was installed in the late 90s and is considered non contributing. The porch located on the side of the house can be seen in the 1901 as well as 1937 standard board maps. Based on this information, the porch is considered a contributing feature to the structure. The following is taken from the September 1st, 2021 German Village Commission hearing minutes. The commission stated that they have allowed side porch and bills, but not at the level of capacity. They suggested using glazed panels instead. Commissioners noted that the height of proposed dormers cannot be level with existing ridge, would need to be lowered one foot below existing ridge on rear addition. Shed roof line on the rear of the proposed addition will need to be under sill and not cutting into the sill. Commissioners noted that if the applicant infills the porch, the lintel on the main house will need to remain if they intend to fill in the opening of brick. Commissioners requested to continue application to give applicant time to revise drawings. Staff recommends approval without porch and fill with revised drawings to be submitted. Staff recommended conditions that the dormers follow GBC guidelines and signing details to be submitted to staff, i.e., when siding materials will be used in dimensions. Basis of staff recommendation is German Village Guidelines, Dormers and Skylights, page 98, number 2, and CC 3316-12, Standards of New Construction, letter D, E, M, and German Village Guidelines, page 93, edition number 4. So since uh, last month, I have done uh, taken your suggestions and made some revisions based on those suggestions. Uh, first, I uh, dropped the ridge of the dormers below the ridge of the existing um, ridge of the existing structure, as shown there. Um, on the east, which is the rear elevation, I have shown the existing lintel and window opening to remain behind the proposed addition, and we will infill that opening above the roof line with non-matching brick, as you had requested. Um, and third, for the proposed infill of the, the small side porch, um, I took your suggestion on uh, a couple different things. Uh, number one, I'm retaining the columns that are at the corner. You can see there on the partial north elevation. Um, they're very small, but they're there. Um, and then um, I have set the new wall back from the existing brick facade behind the columns. Um, I have kept the trim details above to show where the 
uh, really above and below to, to make that um, sort of porch structure stand out as different. And then um, we are filling the open space with um, a, basically it's, I have uh, included some spec sheets on a, basically a, like a curtain wall system. Um, there's many, uh, it's by Solar Inner Innovations. There's many interior and exterior finishes that we can choose from. Uh, but basically that whole thing would be infilled with glass panels. Um, and then on the inside, on the lower half, we would back that with something so that we could put cabinets in there um, in the kitchen area. And we don't have a spec sheet in there. It's... Um, I yeah. sent it over. Oh, maybe you have a first copy. I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, so one quick question uh, the fourth fill in. Yes. You mentioned you're keeping the columns, that yes. means the two end columns. Yes. There was also an intermediate column, that column is being removed. Yeah, it's, it's not, um, it's actually not centered. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm actually taking that one and moving it to the, um, so they're on both outside corners. Is the other elevation back far enough that you can move it where it is existing? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Is the, the, the uh, the product there you have, which is this cut sheet, right? Which is like the curtain wall. So yes, it, yes. You said it's set back. Yes. Could so you leave the column where it is and build that behind it? Um, the existing one that's not yeah, the centered? I, yeah. Um, I don't remember is there exactly. Room? Yes, there is. Okay. There's definitely room to build that wall behind the columns. Um, the column being the middle of your window? Yeah, that's, yeah, that, <laughs> That's the reason I, I didn't do that. I think we would be inclined to see it in its original position rather than move. Okay. Um, uh, I know that may be a little bit funky, but that's part of what you do in the Sheridan Village Right, funky, right. Right? But the intent would be, from our standpoint, that it could be returned to a historic condition. Yes. Um, so I think I would prefer to see that column in its existing location. Our instructions from the city is to are to preserve the clunk. Yeah. <laughs> well put. Yes. I understand and can appreciate that. <laughs> That's the only thing I thought. I appreciate I appreciate all the other uh, modifications listening to the comments. I've got a question the, the horizontal volume on that on uh, back to the porch infill. Yes. It, does that align with your counters or yes. not? It does. Yes. Okay. My other concern is the fact that these are aluminum on the outside. I am open to if if you have a stipulation for the exterior finish, I am open to whatever you feel is appropriate. There is a wood tap option in the place. Yes, that yeah. yes, there is a wood okay. tap option in that. That's the reason I picked that particular okay. um, product. What do you think? Yeah, so we can make that a condition. Does it look good? And it's clearly new, which is okay. Okay. So I think, you if, if, are you willing? Do we have other comments? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm checking to see if <laughs> we're all concurrent on this. Yeah. Is, is there any other comments? No, other than you put the column in that, that's the only thing that's Are you that willing to modify those two things we did? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so I will move to approve. 07 GB 2109033614 South Pearl Street as modified by the applicant. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. It passes. Thank you very much. With modifications. Yes. Yeah, very nice. No, that's I. I'm trying to move and make sure that we're all on speed here. And for all you, I don't do this normally, so.
Item number eight, 783 South 6th Street. Hello, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please state your names. Kathy Holger, the owner of the property. Thank you. Eric Maxwell. Mr. Chairman, before we continue, I need to accuse myself for 783 South 6th. Very good. Morgan. Number eight, GB 21090347837863 South 6th Street, proposed work description, proposed expansion of existing enclosed porch. New porch will have the same character and detailing as the existing. Exterior finished materials will be painted cedar and lack siding to match the existing home. No zoning variances will be required for this project. Staff review at the September business meeting, the commission noted that removing the walls and roofing sounds more like demolition versus. Version, the commission requests the drawing more clearly denote what parts of the porch are being removed and demolished. The commission noted that they will need to determine if porch is contributing. Note that it does appear to be highly altered. Staff notes that the rear porch can be seen on the structure in the sandboard maps from 1921, December 1951, but was either enclosed around 1973 or before when COA number 3473 was issued to install low of siding. This can be seen in images in April 1985. The porch was then approved for alterations in 1993 to have a four-inch wood siding. Following is taken from September 1st, 2021, during Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioner stated that they were not against the expansion of the porch, just against the demolition of wall and roof. They also noted that they are not, not opposed to constructing an addition to the porch to retain separate massing to keep original porch footprint. Commissioners and applicant aren't sure of what materials original in the structure and what is altered. Commissioners request to continue application to give applicant time to perform more investigation into the porch, i.e. the foundation and existing materials. They also request documentation of what is found to be sent to GBC, which it has. Um, staff notes the porch has been altered over time. Staff recommends adding an addition to the porch instead of expanding the existing porch. Based off staff recommendations, CC 3161611, standards of alteration number 10. In German Village Guidelines, Entryways and Porch Enclosures, page 100, number two. Thank you. Do you have anything to add or discuss? Uh, when we were here last uh, last month, um, there was a lot of discussion about what was contributing, what was not, what was existing, what, and when it was built. So I put my forensic cap on and went out and did a lot of interior removal of floor to try to determine what was built when. And it looks to me like it was there were three projects, maybe four, of this porch from 1900 to 1993, what we have documented. Um, based on the floorboard material being treated and when treated became available uh, for residential use, I feel pretty confident that the porch was expanded during that 1973 um, project. And uh, and then after 73, sometime between 73 and 93, uh, there was um, there was another uh, piece to that with the application in 1993, where they took the aluminum siding off, replaced it with wood, and they did a stucco uh, skirting to that porch. Uh, I believe when the project was built, in 1900 Sanborn map, um, you, that one story addition to the rear was not there. 1921 to 1951, the Sanborn map shows the cellar stair and the one story addition. I, I sent a picture showing that stone foundation uh, from inside the cellar or yeah. the basement area. Um, and then when I was able to get into the floor system, I saw three different materials kind of built haphazardly, hard to tell what was built when. But I don't believe the porch expansion as it currently sits was done before 73. I can also say it's never been used, as at least the previous two owners have both said they used it more like a mudroom storage. It's never been a screened in porch. And as he said in one of his notes, I've done a lot of work on this place and I love my yard. I just love my yard. And if you sit, you can't see out of the windows. The inside, I know that there was something about the wall and the roof and not wanting to take those down. The inside 
like some of the boards are coming down by themselves. So there needs to be some kind of repair. So I'm hoping we can consider that. Anything else? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Commissioners? I appreciate the diligence to try to help us figure out what is a ribbon. Okay. Well, you got this picture. Can you explain what we're looking at, where we're looking at it from, and what we're looking towards? So I'm standing in the cellar stair. Okay. I pulled up a couple boards by that stair, yeah, that okay. original stair, and stuck my hands down there to try to take some shots towards the west, towards the garage. Mm -hmm. You can see the brick on the left. Mm -hmm. There's a little section of brick. I don't know if that was an old foundation of a separate porch from the cellar stair. I don't believe the cellar stair was originally covered by a porch. I believe it was separate. Um, then you see to the left, there's some treated uh, floor joists that were added, spliced. Yeah. Um, there's all the lumber is, you know, inch and a half lumber, not two inch. It's so it's again, 60s or after um, for that type of material. Uh, there's some one by skirting. It's a little dark in that picture, but there's some one by skirting. I think at one point the porch was skirted um, with wood. Uh, but I don't believe the current footprint was original um, to the house. To, to, to the house. But it dates from 1940s. No, I believe this dates from the 70s. The last, it's a, there is a this picture. This last expansion. The last footprint of the porch. That's all we have for Yeah. Yeah. The picture you have is from the west. You can see the outline, but you can't tell how if it's connected to that to that cellar stair. But. Uh, seven, three, the porch has been there for 30 years in that in that massing with that window fenestration. The porch has been there for 30 years in that massing in that fenestration. The porch has been there for at least since the 70s. Yeah, yeah. yeah correct. And it, and it's been modified and manipulated. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, at least three or four. Yeah, times. but but the massing and the, and the the massing, the undulation of the openings, all that stuff has stayed the same. They may have replaced the porch, but still the massing of the addition has stayed the same. Correct, at least since the 70s. Yes, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, so the, 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 the good issue is, is it contributing or not to, to us? And should you be allowed to essentially demolish it and replace it, or go back to what we originally had recommended where you do an addition to it, which may get you your screens and other stuff, but still keep the massing showing. So. I understand what you mean by an addition to it. That the massing would stay the same, but you add square footage to it? But it, not change the current form. Yeah. Okay. So you make it go back. Come out part way. That, that would be for your designer to figure out, but yeah. So that's kind of what we had recommended at the last meeting. I guess I know that at the last minute, too, it, when you talked to me, the big concern was the foundation being original, and it's not. And I... So well, we, so we touched base with you guys after you came out and said it's not. We've got floodplains, we have auditors things. So I remember I came for shutters and it was the original in 1886 didn't have shutters. But in 1962 it did, but I wasn't allowed to do shutters because on the historic came, part of the house. So I'm right. just I said to him that wouldn't make sense that something at one point it had to be in the 1880s and then this point it doesn't so i did question so i well, maybe i can help clarify it's it's what we're trying to get at is is, is it contributing in 30 years is, is our rough number. yeah roughly and if it is contributing is what you're doing to it in line with the time period of it right so right. the original building is contributing and shutters would not have been done at this point if this porch is also contributing, it would need to maintain the integrity of what it's built. And that's based on the interior guideline from the National yeah. Park Services, et cetera. And, and, and that doesn't exclude you doing an addition to it to get what you want. Where we can still identify what the original porch was. Granted, you're probably going to lose some uh, elevation space to make the connection or whatever you're going to do, but that's kind of think we're right because what we, that's what we recommended last month. One question I remember looking at it and of course the roof is not very sharp looking and I thought we could do a cathedral, but I knew that that would be a change. And so to bump the roof out two foot, it would 
stay looking the same exact look. It's not like you've changed the, the fenestration of the porch. That's the other side. So we're still looking to, we're still being able to be able to look at it and see what see the massing what the porch is and identify what your addition is. Okay. To get your square footage, get the aesthetic that you want, get some opening. I mean, I'm okay. not against all that. It, for me, it's just a matter of, right. I think the porch has been there. It's contributing. It's it's there now. Um, figure out some way to make that work for you. Are we able to modify that porch in any way, meaning the stuff, I'm sorry, the stucco skirting that's falling down? Can we, can we come in with some upkeep of that porch? I mean, I... A bread kick up to me that skirting has changed so many times that that is not historic okay. but everything to me everything above that skirting is um that's the important part to get to speak to your your floor being new mm -hmm. the mid 1800s addition to my house yeah as a brand new floor in it because the termites took it out about 20 years ago. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're doing some a lot of what is. Yeah. I understand that, but we're just trying to get to a to an understanding of how this porch yeah. was built over the years. Yeah. Or modify or. Yeah, it looks exactly like a 1930s porch lodge that I worked on. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, it, it probably does. It dates to pre 1951 as a sandborn map shows, and it's just been updated over time. But it's form square windows is probably what it was back in the 40s. Well, that's what your neighbors said. Right. That was two different. My neighbor and somebody across the street both said it was the 60s. And again, when you look at the floodplains, it did not have that on it in the 40s. And it did in the well, 60s. It's shown on this map that okay. the IRP 1950 yeah. Fire insurance people said it was there. <laughs> it, it's just hard. I can't imagine what you're talking about. I'm sure we can make it work. It's hard to see it as a mud room and not be able to enjoy it, but you're saying I will be able to enjoy it. Yeah, I think you, I think you can get there. I mean, okay. I, it, I think it's a matter of the commission agreeing to how much you modify it but so that we can, as i said we can still see the original massing of what the porch was that's the important part would you i would agree okay. so would you like us to continue this for you for another month <laughs> we need to get started don't we um it's up to you you know that well you don't have four people to vote anyway correct? no we, well, we, we, have we do based on the fact that you get this piece. yeah Um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue it. Is there a motion? Yeah, I can't get the number here. Motion to continue, uh, GB2109034783 South 15. Did I get that right? Okay. Yep. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed, same sign. Continuing as passed. Can I ask one question not about that? But again, the shutters, originally there's paint from where they were put on in 1962. And I only wanted to put them on the front, but when I came and I had all the history, they were not put on initially in 1886 when it was built. So I'm confused with that was not historically accurate, even though they've been put on in the 60s. So, so, it was so they weren't put on for the portion. So that portion was built in the 1800s. I see. So they wouldn't have been original okay. for them. This okay. portion was built in the 60s, now I which is a contributing. Okay, thank and, you. And that. the shutters that were put on the 60s were decorative and not yeah. functional. Right. The, and most of the cottages in German Village, the owners could not afford shutters. I know that. <laughs> and Frank Fetch did it on all four of his, and I know Oh, that. yeah, we've got some winners. Yeah. <laughs> you guys told me that was for cosmetic reasons. So yeah. I just wanted to thank you yeah. for clarifying. No, thank you for thank you. support the interview. Like yep. Thank you so much. Item number 9, 1147 Jaeger Street. Is there anyone here? Please raise your right hand. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name. Teresa Gates. Commissioner Farrell is rejoining us.
Item number nine, 1147 Yeager Street. Proposed work description is install window decals on storefront windows and doors. The graphic will be the KCAL logo on both of the large windows in white. It will be 28 inches wide by 11.5 inches tall. Graphics will be made locally by Creekside Crafty Creations, remaining part of the logo, the dog, and the birthday hat. We have cake to be placed on the front door as also in white. It will be 8.262 inches wide and 9 inches tall. Staff review at the September business meeting. Commission asked if three decals are currently on the building or not. Um, so they are not. The proposed decals are not currently in front of the commercial building. The commission also asked when black panel door was approved. Staff found this door was approved in April 20th, 2021 under COA number GB 2106019. The commission also requested staff to look at the past window decal approval for consistency, which has been added to this application for reference. Staff recommends approval of any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff to review and approval prior to issuance of certificate. Based off the German village guidelines, guidelines for graphics and signage, page 131, Signs and graphics can contain only the name and function of the business. Signs and graphics are limited in size, must have pedestrian orientation, emphasize the area's residential character, and be compatible with the architecture and its character. Sign and graphics color should be complemented to the building and its trim colors. The installation of signs must be reversible and cannot be permanently altered or damaged historic building material. Signs should not obscure architectural detail. Thank you. Do you have anything to add or clarify? I don't think so. Commissioners? Pretty straightforward, I think. Any comments? Nope. Is there a motion? Motion to approve GB2109035 1147. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed saying sign? Your application is approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item 10, 253 East Cotha Street. Please raise your right hand. I'd like to affirm if I could. I'd like to affirm. Okay. I'm going to have to guess what that is. That's uh, fine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're good to go. Thank you. I'll ask Jeff what that means. Yeah. Number 10, GB 210937, 253 East, Cross Street, apartment 23H, or 253H, my apologies. A proposed work description, remove original French door openings on the patio of one of the apartments, replace door with new door for attached specifications. Door will be rebuilt with new wood and paint to restore original appearance and function. Staff review has found the apartment complex was built in 1951 and falls within the period of historic significance. The door appears to be original to the complex as well, which makes the door contributing. The door appears to be in good condition and can be repaired. At the October Business Meeting, Commission requested clarification of what design and product they will be using for the replacement. Staff recommends repairing existing door with like for like material, with replacement of deteriorated door sill. If the applicant is concerned about security, staff will recommend installing a deadbolt or replacing doorknob. Based off staff recommendation CC 311611, standards of alteration, number six, deteriorated architectural features shall be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. Do you have anything to add or clarify? Um, I have a question. The material you just read, where is that available? The material that I read is that in the minutes? That is on the agenda under staff um, staff reports. It should be linked on staff reports. And okay, well, thank you. Sent a link earlier through email as well, where the agenda is available for there. I, yeah, I looked through the agenda, okay. and, yeah. the, and the agenda has. Hyperlinks yes. to the staff reports. Exactly. Commissioners? Nothing else to add? All right. Um, not at this point. Does your intent still to replace the door? Versus repair it as staff. We would agenda. like to replace the door, yeah. You're replacing it with the one with the five panes long or the one shown in the drawing that shows six panes. We would like to get it to look exactly the same. I didn't. I would. 
and use the drawings that were available on the website, we are willing to do whatever recommendation the commission would have. We're brand new to this process, so sorry if we we're not exactly sure what, what we need to propose here. So what's wrong with the existing door that we'd like to replace? Or what, what's driving the replacement? Um, yeah, scroll up a little bit. Um, it doesn't seal. Those yeah, the tape is over large holes in the in the frame. And assuming it was unitized when it was installed. You say it doesn't steal you steal, you mean at the location where the studio doors meet or at all? Yeah, picture that that you were seeing at the bottom of the door. Yeah. Next. Have you had anybody come out to look out if it should be rehung and repaired, or did you only get a proposal for the replacement? We only got a proposal for replacement. What you're what you're likely to find is when you talk to people who are in the business of selling new doors, mm -hmm. that they find it very difficult to repair the existing yeah. condition. Well, I think we we don't have sufficient information, at least I don't at this point, to, to know that this is not repairable. And so the guidelines would ask that they be repaired typically to maintain the historic materials rather than replaced. So uh, I think you're faced with two options. You could either ask us to vote on this, and we could vote yay or nay, or you could continue it and take the time to, to meet with a repair company to see if it can be repaired or provide documentation to, to explain to us why it can't be. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Understandable. So I, I find myself in the uncomfortable position of realizing that this building was built right about in the time I was born. <laughs> so that makes me historic as well as the building now. Um, but I, I'm wondering if the com any other com any commissioners know whether the wood quality that's likely to be in this 1950s era door is as bad as the new the wood material in new doors that are currently being installed. We're so used to the idea that the historic the, the older materials, 19th century, early 20th century materials, are of a such higher quality than what's available today. I'm not sure how that rationale. It's it's on the cusp. I think I, I was researching this. It was like in the 40s is when old growth wood started running out. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and my opinion has always been mid 60s is the cutoff point. I know there's at least one bottom <laughs> door where it has been patched. I didn't, I didn't include that. I guess apologize for being uh, ignorant about uh, the, the, the preference for rebuilding a door. We assumed that a door that didn't seal needs to be replaced. Um, it's single pane glass and, and all of those things that those are, are the quirks that are worth keeping. Um, I suppose our next step is to uh, is to ask to continue this application. We'll see about it getting repaired. Is and would am I to assume that um, repairing the existing door is also an approvable action? Like, or can it be step? It's going to be. I don't know. It could be step. It could be step approved, Maybe which would, would speed up the process for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is there anything about the the door frame that uh, we need to be concerned about? 
Well, if you go, so for instance, that sill, if you wish to replace that sill, you could replace it in kind through a staff application, no problem. Yeah, you, you've got replacement work on the frame also. Right. Yeah. Just as long as the opening is not a as long, as long as it all matches what's there. There, you can see in this picture a little bit, the bottom half of those two. Yeah, those are those have already been repaired. Yeah, before. and your sill's pretty well shot too. And I mean, I'm guessing what's going to happen is they're going to pull the whole thing out, replace the, the trim work, and put the door back in, which could be done. Yep. And that back would help with your ceiling issue because they would they would rehang everything and get it all done. And this this comes up with respect to windows frequently. People sometimes have difficulty finding someone with the skill to repair historic doors and windows. The city, of course, is naturally reluctant to make recommendations about people uh, you might uh, you might consult with or you might hire. But I think the folks at Columbus Landmarks have, um, are acquainted with who does a good job of repairing historic doors and windows. And I suggest that you, you contact them if you're trying to locate someone who specializes in doors and windows. I'm sure staff would be willing to provide the contact information to Lana. Yes. Okay. Would you like us to continue it? Yes, please. Motion. Motion, Motion to continue GB 210907253 Cossett Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. It has been continued. Item number 11, 180 Thurman Avenue. Anyone here for 180 Thurman, Thurman Avenue? Anyone here for item right, number five? 333 East Deck. Right. Item number 12. Circle back to those. 792 South Third Street. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please state your names. My name is Chris Thomas. I'm David Grimaldi. Thank you. Number 12, GB 210942, 792 South 30th Street. Um, proposed work to proposed patch a willow tre rose trellis to the interior wall of the house in order to grow fine roses. This will be done with spacers to control moisture behind the plant. The material will be natural woods, willow branches, and is crafted by a professional. Trellis is to be attached. Via mortar joints and not into the brick. Staff review at the September business meeting. The commission has some concerns about controlling proposed plant from going pretty much and into the brick. They have asked them to clarify. Staff recommends, uh, staff typically does not recommend approval for growing plants attached to the structure to protect from moisture damage. Staff recommends conditions that the trellis to be installed away from the masonry structure based off of the CC 316 13 standard site improvements, uh, letter A. Do you have anything to add or clarify? Um, I did want to clarify. It says here that fellowship is going to be attached to the rear of the front. It's actually at the, the front of the property in between the, the two windows. And how far is it away from the masonry? Well, so what I want to do is I want to put in like a spacer about yay much so that there's airflow between. It, it's a loose. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to put a spacer in there so that there's nice airflow in between, so that there's not going to be a lot of moisture. There's not going to be moisture, you know, it's underneath the hang too. So I think we're pretty safe. So just to be specific, four inches, five inches, six inches. How much is that? Four. four. <laughs> All right, commissioners. So we'll note that that as that modification. Yeah. Uh, 11, right? Yes. Uh, I move to approve uh, GP21. 12. 12. I'm sorry. GP21090427927 sorry. South 3rd Street as modified by the applicant as for a four inch spacer and eight inch wall between the rear and the front of the building. Is there a second? Second. Any opposed? Same sign. Motion to continue. Motion to continue. GP21097. Yes. Yes. Staff recommends that the trellis be attached to the rear of the building. Staff recommends that the trellis be attached to the rear of the building. 
All those opposed, same sign. Your application is passed. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate the time and the help. Item number 13, 862 Mohawk Street. Anyone here for 862 Mohawk Street? This is Bill Dugas, and he's actually doing as well as well. I didn't know that he was doing that. Does he wish us to continue this one? Uh, I was wondering if we could maybe proceed, but I figured we would have to continue. But um, I, I would we'll suggest we continue it if Bill can't be here. Yeah. Does he have other on the, on the agenda? Does he have anything else? Yeah. No. Okay. okay. Good. Item number 12. 13. Right? 13. Sorry. Uh, move, move to continue DB21 uh, 023862 Mohawk Street. Second. I've got GB2109 40. Dash 40. Oh, the agenda says. I've got the business meeting too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there. So sorry, I will change that. It was originally going to be from the last month's meeting, and then it was changed to the October. So I will adjust to that. So it's it should be ten zero twenty three. Thank you. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> yeah, that it's You're good. Smart. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. It is continued. Item fourteen. 689 South 3rd Street. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please state your name. Daniel May with Bellas Radio. Thank you. Item number 14, GB21 and 024, 689 South 3rd Street. Proposed work description is removal of plants and beds. Install 320 square feet of thermal bluestone tile with gravel base. Applicant will leave existing first paver walkway and patio. Proposed wall to be installed with will be Indiana limestone with gravel base around bluestone. Indiana limestone dimensions are three inches tall and eight inches wide. The wall will be two cores of Indiana limestone. Height will be six inches tall. Two inches will be buried below grade, with the remaining four inches will be above the patio. There will be three inches of compacting gravel underneath the base. There will also be a small gap on the bottom course to allow water to flow through. The wall will retain much on one side. Mulch, not much. <laughs> retain mulch on one side with patio on the other. Sorted plantings will be planted for submitted specifications, including five yards mulch and five yards soil. Staff analysis review taken from the October business meeting. Commission requested clarification of the proposed wall. Dimension and size. Applicant responded with dimensions and description that has been listed in the proposed work description. Staff recommends approval of any of all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate based off of CC 3116.13 standard of site improvements, letter A, and CC 3116.11 standards of alteration, number 12. Do you have anything to add or clarify? Commissioners? So the wall that goes around the path, that the existing brick. So around the path, the path stays, then there's going to be bluestone tile all the way around that. If there's an 18 inch flower bed around the perimeter. The wall will be between the bluestone and the brick. Sure. Examples exactly what we'll do. So between the Blue stone in the mulch. Correct. Right. And the brick paving is inside the blue stone? It's brick paving existing now. We're not removing that. We use that as the accent color to do the blue stone around the circle. Around it. Okay. And then is the border with the well, the border is between the brick and blue stone. No. The brick and the blue stone and the, the between the blue stone and the mulch. It's 18 inches from the So the blue stone is flush with the brick. Correct. Right. But rather than a pathway to a little circle, it's basically just all one surface down with the border. So on the plan drawing where it says existing beds, that's just going to be shrunk. Exactly. We just don't have a drawing showing where the bluestone is going. I think it's just everything that's not. It says bluestone tile patio right there. Yeah. So it's, the, it's the in between. <laughs> okay, so so existing bed is now perimeter. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's see. 
Commissioners, anything else? Was there something about the front? Oh, no, that's the next one. I'm sorry, Brown. Was there something about the front front? I'm not really aware of that. Yeah, not on this one. Okay. Karen just wanted more details on the wall around the path. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion? Remind me the number one, 15? Yeah. Item 14. 14. Motion to approve GB21. 10024 689 South Street. Second. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed same sign. Your application is approved. Thank you. Item 15, 780 Mohawk Street. Is there anyone here for item number 15? Very good. Please raise your right hand. Be softly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name. William Monday Hammond. Okay. Can you the JB 21 10 780 Mohawk Street? Proposed work rusted four inch chain link fence was removed and replaced with three to one privacy fence, five inches wide by five inches long, with 12 three and a half inches wide by three, 12 three and a half inches long posts that are square at the top. Including a barn style entryway that opens inward from Mohawk. Front and back doors were painted red. Unimproved red flag poles were removed from front and rear property. The flower boxes that are under the code violation were included in the original purchase of the property. Staff reviewed this application in response to a code violation. The commission stated at the October business meeting that the newly installed dog weed fence with metal caps will need to be further discussed at the current month's hearing. Staff recommends that the fence be replaced with appropriate plain vertical board fences nailed side by side on parallel stringers. Based on the proposed work, is consistent with CZ, CZ, Version 11618 approvals required. Uh, letter C, German Village Guidelines, page 113, is number three and number five. Do you have anything to add or clarify? Just want to know what we need to do to. <laughs> Bring it up to par. Oops. Yeah, I'm a little per perplexed by this one. Of course, we normally don't approve fences with the dog ears, but this one you kind of obscured the dog ears a little bit. So it's a fence style I don't think we've seen before, so I'm not. It's unique. Not sure. Yeah, you know, outside yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. You can see the dog ears because of that. And, and, and my thing would be do what's on the inside on the outside. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah. You just added that ease. And then we can discuss the metal cap. Hide the dog ears on the yeah. outside. On the other side, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Just that's that's easy. Easy. Like we easy solution. Side. What about the metal post caps? No. The metal post cap, I meant to pull one off and bring it down here. It's like plastic. Oh, it's a plastic? Thing. It's a plastic. It's not metal. Our... I'm not sure that's right. Plastic? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure it's plastic. Yeah, well, it looks like plastic. It, it looks, looks like, like it could be. I mean, it should be wood. Yeah. It'll melt. <laughs> no, we don't approve metal. We don't approve metal. We have we have not approved metal. Uh, have we gotten plastic? I don't think we've heard. Yeah, no. <laughs> Would you be a part of the pulling them off? No, I wouldn't. Stunned that I could pull one off and bring it back down here and show you what it's made out of. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Gonna... I think it's less what it's made of is the appearance. It looks like it could be a metal or like a, which would not be appropriate yeah. or even whatever. So I think if, if you're willing to pull those off and, and provide a trim piece around the outside, I feel yes. much better about the application. Yes. But anybody else? That's I'm 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 on that works, yeah. that works for me. Yeah, no cap or a wood cap. That's fine with me. How about the lights? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That that goes with no cap. Yeah. Are you okay pulling those lights off as well? Yeah, they're like the solar plug. They're solar type. Yeah. 
plastic caps in them. Yeah, that's why I bought I bought the whole set. Mm -hmm. Think of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, with that in mind, uh, motion to approve DB two one ten zero two five seven eighty Mohawk Street as modified by the applicant to add the trim piece to the outside, remove the caps, including the solar lights, and with any staff references. There's second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. As modified, it is approved. Thank you very much. So, so as I'm going to do, I have to take a picture, come back down there, show you guys this modified. You got to, yeah, comply with what was just passed, and you're good to go. Yes, sir. Thank you. And as an aside, if I might thank you for getting rid of that hideous chain link. Yeah, yeah, it's been there for a long time. Dangerous. A yeah. long, long time. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't think that out. Thank you, sir. Item number 16, 228 East Beck Street, Frank Fetch Park. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, please raise your right hand. Who solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your names, please. David Green, Nick Gilliland. Thank you. Item number 16, GB 2110 026, 228 East Beck Street. Proposed work description proposed construction of new pergola spring fetch park. The size of the pergola has been reduced. The location of the pergola has been adjusted to accommodate bike feet. Zoning setback for the property line is now in center alignment with the existing water feature in the park. Applicant will be replacing existing concrete with new concrete pad, buff wash finish below the pergola in the same location as existing. Staff review of proposed pergola was issued a COA in 2018 but has expired. At the October business meeting, the commissioner requested an overlay of the two site plans for 2018 and the recently proposed pergola since the new pergola has been reduced in size, which they have, and I have, was able to download it. Of the overlay, just to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, staff recommends approval with any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate based on CC 3116 12 standards of new construction, letter A and H. Is there anything to add or clarify? Uh, no, this is just a, a this is uh, coming back with some revisions. The, the prime driver was the five foot setback that was not achieved with the last uh, application. We looked, re looked at the program, felt like we actually could take the size of this down and go with the number of just two, two of the picnic tables with the center bay being, being open. Um, we just felt more comfortable, frankly, with that, with that scale. Otherwise, the design is very consistent with what was uh, brought here before. I should say that uh, Kathy Spatz with uh, Rec and Parks is also here, and they, of course, own the property, and they can speak to anything. From but we're happy to answer any uh, any questions. Commissioners? My comment is, I think it's a more elegant and more appropriate scale structure for the park. I think this is better than what you had before. We agree. <laughs> I really do. Mr. Chairman, um, I move uh, approval of and the item 16, GV-21-10-026, 228 East Beck Street as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Your application is approved. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Really, we could have revisited Anyone here for 333 East Beck Street? Anyone here for eight, uh, 180 Thurman? On to item number 17, 120 Reinhardt Avenue.
Oh, thank you. <laughs> Please raise your right hands. I'm sorry. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. State your names, please. Thank you very much. I apologize. Thank you. Number 17, DB 2110 and 27, 120 Reinhardt Avenue. Proposed first floor interior kitchen remodel and floor addition. Proposed second floor master bedroom and bath addition. First and second floor additions will be comprised of a traditional trim board to delineate new existing. Replacement of existing non original windows with new Marvin clad ultimate next gen two double hung windows. Replace front door with Marvin ultimate wood doors. Install new gal galloom silver standing steam metal roof. Proposed landscape alterations including the front yard garden contained by iron fencing and tree lawn along the curb. Staff review application was previously reviewed as a conceptual in July 2021, where commission noted that it is clear the building has been modified over time, but cautioned about historic side lanes of to avoid false history. Commission noted the portion of the porch appears to be an extension that was added. In 1965, application noted the removal of a porch. The extended appearing porch is present in photos from 1977 application. Commissioner notes that to add shutters there will need to be evidence that shutters were present historically. Commission suggests an exploratory, exploratory investigation to be done to see if there's shadow or original trim and possibly original siding. Commission would be fine with altering the trim to make appropriate, but would not need to be simple if there's lack of evidence for ornamental trim. Commission agrees that porch looks like it has been extended and some would be fine with reworking the porch. Proposed hanging gas lanterns are normally not approved by the commission. They suggest avoiding ornate gas lanterns to avoid store siding. Commission is not opposed to additions in concept. The additional roof should be subservient to existing historic home room, home roof width and height. Eaves are also designed higher and stick out from an existing roof currently. City code enforcement typically does not allow overhang with less than three feet. Eaves may need to be pulled back from less elevation. Staff recommends approval of any and all clarification to be submitted to HBO staff to review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate based off of 316.11 standards of alteration number 9, 10, and 12. In Kirby Village Guidelines, page 93, number four. Any additions, clarifications, discussion? Uh, I was asked to bring existing elevations of the house. Um, I brought one of the rear elevations, but the front elevation, we're not changing much. Or only my code is Commissioners? I think the question at hand for me is the, the rib line of the addition of the porch lining up. Uh, typically, we ask that that be brought down to be a little less. Is that possible? See, when we got into the drawings and tried to fix that with the window heights and the portions of the existing windows and also their window head heights, um, Kind of, I mean, they won't align if we bring it down, but well, I'm not necessarily talking about bringing down the, the, the fascia, just the ridge, we would have to change the slope of the roof, create a flat spot on the top to delineate the two pitches. Uh, you can create a flat spot, or or I don't know if we've done that before, it's simply yeah. change the slope to be a little less, just so that that original ridge is. It's a little bit higher, and you can get enough to in there and trim. Wait, can you point out where? You're... So this this is what I understand. This is added. I mean, this is all added, right? 
call this roof? Roof, yeah. Roof. And so this is in line with the existing bridge. Typically, we'd like it to be lower. So you could just simply modify the, 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 the slope of that to bring it down a little bit. I think if it's shingled, you're probably okay. That's a pretty steep pitch you've got there. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, but I was just thinking it through. Does the other side work? Because that's, if I look at the roof plan, that's a hip, right? You would end up with a little bit of a, you'd have to work through a couple little things. But. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, oh, we can do that. And I'd personally be okay with working that out with staff, not having to bring it back to you. Yeah, okay, thank you. That's just typical, so that, so that it's clear it's an addition. Yeah. That makes sense. That was my time. Trissa? I think they took care of everything else. But... I was starting to look at the windows, but they're not original, so. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think the trims and stuff that you're adding to the front are fine. They're not over the top. Yeah. Well, I went back to look at that original sketch and compared to what you're actually proposing, I'm fine with that. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to B21-10-027. Uh, I lost the address. <laughs> As modified by the app. For a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say sign. Your application is modified as approved. Thank you. It's for staff approval. Item number 18, 1027 City Park Avenue. Sorry. Oh, very good. Hello. Hello. Please raise your right hand. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. David. Please state your name. Sure. Thank you, sir. Item number 18, GB 2110, 28, 1027 City Park Avenue. Proposed work description is to enclose the original side porch with marble aluminum flat French doors and stationary panels. Porch opening will be filled entirely with glass. Existing metal railings will remain and will stretch across the front front doors and run the length of the porch. Replace two non original failing windows on the south elevation of the second floor of the rear addition with Marvin aluminum clad two over two sashes match existing. Staff review side porch is seen in 1921 1951 sand board maps. Staff notes that the side porch was modified in 1969 when a COA number 22669 was issued to change the wood decking to cement. The porch was then again modified by extending the porch and installing a railing after 1999. According to photos, no record of a COA being issued. Commissioners requested elevation drawings for the proposed porch enclosure, which have been provided. Staff recommends approvals any and all clarification to be submitted to the HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificates. Staff agrees that the porch has been altered over the years. This recommendation is based off of 31 16 11 standard of alteration, number 9 and number 12. Anything to add or clarify? And just sure. confirming the uh, concrete deck sticks out beyond the brick. It does. So is you, your enclosure uh, going to the edge of the concrete or is it going to stay within the brick? The enclosure will stay flush with the brick okay. and the concrete sticks back. It's probably 10 inches past It'll the brick. It'll just stick out. Okay. And that's what the Juliet railing is? It, it, yeah, I should not have called it the Juliet. I, railing, I know. Through me. All right. Any other comments? Motion to approve GB21-10-028, 1027 City Park Avenue, as submitted with staff approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Your application as submitted has been approved. Thank you. Number 19, 250 East Whittier Street.
Philip, please raise your right hand. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. State your names, please. Dan Mike Thank you, sir. Item number 19, 2110 29, 250 East Winter Street. Proposed work description replace existing deteriorated deck on the river tunnel with composite decking. Deck will be timber tech silver maple decking with white risers and fascia. Footprint of the deck will not change. Staff review there was a COA issued in September 2007 to expand the first floor porch from six feet to 10 feet and to add new brick pavers where the existing porch is. There was no mention of COA being issued to install wood deck. Existing deck can be seen in 2000 2001. Commissioners requested further information about the owners, if the applicant is a new owner or previous owner. They would have the further information about the existing debt. The applicant responded, stating they purchased the property in July of 2020 and has no association prior to that. Staff recommends repair and replacing the deck material with wood, like for light, it's the proposed timber tech materials, based off of 311611 standard for alteration number six. Any comments, clarifications, additions? Uh, you said the recommendation is to replace with wood and not the, the composite material? Yeah, that's staff recommendation. As a contractor here, and someone that's been in the deck business for a very long time, whenever we have a deck that's so tight to grade as this one is, I always uh, like to encourage going with the um, you know the materials that can survive that environment and I think even comments about the door on an earlier uh, applicant here where the discussion about the doors and the wood and how how good the wood was in the 40s and 50s and then it stopped around the 60s well that's very true with pressure treatment materials now uh, they're harvesting young growth trees and they're using different chemicals that, although safe, aren't as preserved, uh, doesn't have the ability to preserve. Get in the position of, of um, installing a deck that could possibly fail very quickly. And so, this particular deck being so tight to grade, the fact that it is not in our mind or in my mind. Uh, visible to anyone is kind of landlocked by the garage, by a six foot fence, by a brick wall on the other side. It's virtually landlocked uh, by the customer, but for the only for the customer to see. So that's those are my comments. Thank you. Commissioners. We have approved alternate deck on rear of some buildings, but not in front of what's the visible from the screen. Yeah, this is not yeah. visible at all. Yeah. It's not a contributing deck or it's not a contributing deck or anything, but where it's visible from the street, where it's somebody's front porch or something like that, we haven't, but in the back, we have it. And if they came to us saying we want to build this deck close to grade because of that one nice plumber, say okay too. <laughs> okay. Is there a motion? Yeah. So Mr. Chairman, my adoption and recommendation, or excuse me, approval of uh, agenda item 19, GB-21-M-029 at 250 East Whittier Street as submitted with the understanding that it's because of the proximity of the deck to the ground, to the grade, that we're approving the uh, not using. Wood. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Your application is approved as submitted. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, one quick question, clerical question. Will I be sent something that, that I attach to my building yes. plans? Yes. Okay. I will issue a COA to you. That's fairly Thank quickly you. or? As, as soon as I can. <laughs> oh, not the CEO. Just, just trying, trying to figure it out. Yeah, Thank no, you. that's fine. Yeah, I will, I will send you a letter and issue a COA. Thank you so much. No, no, how many, many other things we give her to do? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe that. Anyone here from 333 East Beck Street or 180 Thurman? Moving on to item number 20, 253 Lansing Street. Anyone here? Here.
Would you like to sit? Sit. Yeah. Sit. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name. John McCloud. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number 20, DD 2110 30, 253 Lansing Street. Proposed work description is to construct a new two story post house structure 20 feet to the rear of existing residence. Proposed carriage house will be 600 square feet and offset from the existing middle alley in line with the base. Base of the adjacent structure. First floor will comprise of a two car garage and storage space. Second floor will comprise a bed and sitting room apartment. Exterior finish will be board and bat and siding for the second floor. And one by six scallop ship left siding on the first floor. Roofing shingles will be Owens Corning standard three tab and stain spray. Windows will be Pella Impervia fiberglass composite exterior and interior. Painted aluminum attic vents, painted fiberglass garage doors, and two by ten cedar trellis with six by six column stain. Staff review the application was seen as conceptual in May 4, 2021, GBC hearing. The commissioners commented that the proposed coach house. Like any variances, they requested to submit scale drawings of other garages, can be silhouettes or streetscape photo montage to show what scale would be in comparison to existing garages on the street. Current scale appears more like a house, saying that it appears three times larger than that of the garage door. Commissioners know that the historic house is simple design in contrast to the detailed garage design. Coordinating penetration roof and defense. Per guidelines, the garage should be subservient to the house. Height is too tall for garage carriage care house on the alley. Items generally taken into consideration for new construction include massing, detailing materials, rotating the gable roof should help. Staff recommends that the commission offers feedback on design and recommends to continue the application. Based off of CC 3116-12 standards of new construction, the proportion of openings, oh, letter D. And letter E and M. As well as German Village Guidelines, page 113, new buildings, garages, and outbuildings, number one, two, four, and five, and 13. Thank you. Well, comments or clarifications or additions? Um, if you go back to the streetscape, um, I think my basic question is why is it more intrusive than any other garage there? We're lower than the one to the right. Equilibrium with contemporary building in the left. The only detail and difference between the two adjacent garages is garage doors are actually offset. Not any wider than the adjacent property, they're essentially offset, and the garage doors to either side are not offset. Table hand bank is facing the same direction as the two adjacent garages. And the only real addition that I see is the addition of the three windows and the board and batting side. I think rotating the gable end is not synonymous with what's happening on the rest of the streetscape because everybody's gable end is facing the out. Else? Commissioners? I would just note, I think that you brought you brought the eave down about four feet, is that right? Yeah, I think we brought it down back. Yeah, it's about four foot six. So. Yeah, I think it's much better. And, and I, I appreciate the, the streetscape view to show that it now does kind of meet the portion of the others. I think uh, I think you listen. I appreciate that. I actually like it with the uh, gable end facing out. Any comments, Mr. Farrell? My comments are the building down to the right is a residence. So I, I'm not take that into consideration. I don't consider the two story carriage house to the left of you as appropriate and I voted against it. <laughs> I think your spring line. Yeah, they, they got they got passed and that's fine, but that doesn't change my opinion. I, I totally and I think your spring line for your rafters is out of line. I think it's still too high. Okay. I think my opinion still goes to if you want to have that kind of space up there and you need a dormer, the ridge line should be rotated and the dormer should be out the back. So it's gonna cut, cut down on your square footage in the second floor, but that's just the way it is. I, I think starting the dormer, they had dormers on the oh, yeah, floor. Oh yeah, they were. I'm sorry. Yeah, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, but they, the massing was just huge up. And I, and I agree, and we've reduced it yeah. considerably. And, and I'm keeping in mind also that you have a one and, sto one and a half story cottage, that does not warrant a carriage house in the back of it. Not, no. 
It does not warrant a carriage house in the back of it. A one and a half story cottage would never have had a carriage house. It would not have had a garage, maybe an outhouse, maybe a workshop, but that would be it. We do a lot of garages. Uh, not according to what we're, we're told. Sorry, I beg to differ. The adjacent property, the, the property behind us, we put an extension on it last year. Probably but the original the, house is, but the original house is not. It's, it's a full, full two story. It, it isn't a half story in, in the back. And I would be very argumentative, certainly. But this is uh, well, story and a half or not, Lansing residents. Story and a half if you go. My my point is, the residents on Lansing did not have carriage houses behind them. I think the the one isn't the contemporary building and the parking on the second floor. Yeah, okay. and and I voted against that, so. Oh, oh, I'm asking, and I'm not. All you need is you. All you need is a majority of the four commissioners up here to approve it. Okay. I understand, but I'm, I'm trying to absorb your comment because I think. Yeah, it, it should be. It's inappropriate. I think it should be absorbed. He has a full two story, and it has to potentially be set. Which it may not be what you wanted. It's two full story. My my concern is compliance with the, with the overall charter of the historic commission, no. and not losing that. And things that are non-compliant with that detract from that compliance and threaten the historic uh, things staying in place. Well, we are at the story and a half. We have complied with the gable end requirements. All, saying, all you got to do is get saying that the spring one. Is all I'm saying is you could. I'm telling you, you all you got to do is get the majority of the vote here. I, that's, yeah, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm no, just, I'm not either. I'm in discussion with. You. I'm just telling you why I'm going to vote against it. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. Okay. Well, and I think maybe to help you make a decision would always be the greatest thing. I think I'm typically I'm in support of it. That's yeah. obviously not true. I believe your your favorite author. Well, I'm maybe the society. To but... some extent, this is an example of how incremental. Changes that one of at a time don't seem like they're detracting from the historic character of the neighborhood. But the two carriage houses we've already approved that we shouldn't have approved have already done that. This is maybe water over the dam. And I would I would argue that, and I appreciate that point of view as somebody who does historic preservation work. But I would argue <laughs> that personally. Um, the neighborhood will evolve, it should evolve, charge to de determine whether or not they've complied with the new construction section of the guidelines, which is the varying from one of the three, right? Massing, detailing, and materials. Um, detailing and materials are generally similar and they vary a little bit from massing, but less so than others on, on the street. And I, I feel it's appropriate. That's how I land where I land. So, Massing would be a problem if there wasn't massing already. Well, that's the way they're varying, right? And so we call for them to vary, and it's a matter of how much do they vary. And I think that there's also a call to be within the average of the other buildings. Yeah. And to your point, incrementally, yeah. going to increase the average again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 in the middle of a philosophical conversation. I, I thought I, <laughs> it's what, I'm quite happy to listen to it. <laughs> Well, I'm going to move and we'll see how it lands. I, it sounds like we could probably do that, right? Yeah. Rather than yep. continue. Yep, right. Uh, so I'm going to move to approve DB21 N30 253. 253 lands. So before you do that, We have only four commissioners here today. 
have a vacancy and two missing for whatever reasons. So there's some risk here that you'll end up with a tie, even though you be, might be less likely to have a tie if this application was continued the next month's meeting. We have a vacancy, so we might only have six. And of course, you never want to have six <laughs> because of the risk of a tie. But the larger number diminishes the likelihood of a tie. So you might want to think about whether you want to continue your application the next month. What are the ramifications of the tie? Not approved. Tie is a loss. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're cautioning me that a tie possible occurring, take that message. <laughs> Would you like us to continue your application? I, and it's probably wise. Yeah, I think the person that's giving you that advice is kind of and, giving and, you that advice. And I'm hearing him loud and clear. Yeah, and I, that, and I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank, and thanks for speaking up before the second step. So I will modify it. Well, you hadn't even finished your motion. I think I'm still yeah, in the You were still in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To, to, uh, to continue DB2110-30, sorry, dash 030253 Lansing Street. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Your application is continued. Nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You might send a letter to the city about how we need a seventh commissioner. Yes. It would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Item number 21, 921 South Lozelle Street. Anyone here? Thank you. And that's fine. Your point was long enough. Please raise your right hands. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please state your names. Thank you very much. Item 21, DB 21-031-921 South Lozell Street. Proposing a new second story, 216 square feet addition over the existing rear portion of the house with new foundation in this area. Area improvements include replacement of the aluminum siding with new board and bat siding. New reverse board and batten siding on the second story addition, same color as main siding, could be slightly differentiated and from the main house, yet keep it relatable. Roof replacement and new gutters and downspouts to match existing. Existing open roof eaves and sockets will be closed for consistency with new addition and south wall, window and restoration, window restoration and replacement. Original historic windows will get repaired and refinished. Store windows will get repaired or replaced. Double hub windows and north elevation will get replaced. Entry and side doors will get repaired and refinished. Non original fiberglass French doors will get replaced. Repair and replacement of trim and sills in poor condition. Proposing to replace and lengthen the non historical porch. Staff review at the September business meeting. Commission noted that the roof line being extended versus differentiated can be a concern for the rear addition. The commission also noted that the borough does, does not make a good sheet siding based off their knowledge, but Hardy does. Hardy is typically not improved siding for the main house. By commission would approve Hardy because of the lack of oral option. Trim would not be moral. The applicant was also asked to include the mentioned structural engineer report, which has been provided. At the September GBC hearing, the commission stated that they are concerned with addition tying into original roof line. The mass is not being differentiated. Applicants stated driving the roof line down a foot posed a problem for the rake line. Wall along the south property line may need a fire rated wall and enclosed rafters according to the fire code. The commission noted that they think the reverse board of batten for the addition in conjunction. A regular board is that with cellar. Commission would consider using the application of the test case for the new proposed siding material. Commissioner suggested moving the addition north, right above the existing, right above the existing shed roof, which applicant then can maintain the height, but the mass of the original and mass of the addition should be differentiated. They suggested to have the applicant let the roof line drive the interior footprint versus the interior footprint to drive roof line roof replacement. This would also allow a full eave instead of shortening south elevation. Applicant wants to replace windows on south elevation, including the original windows. Commissioners requested more detailed report on the existing windows condition. Commission suggested investigating the porch since the siding is an original and will be replaced. Commission suggested looking behind siding to find evidence of original roof line. If there is no evidence of historic porch, commissioners will be okay with demolition of porch and lengthening it two feet to the east. 
Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate based on the German Village Guidelines, page 93 editions, item number two and number four. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Comments, additions, further discussion? Say with a, with a 117 page application, I'm glad we have this all digitally now. <laughs> the business meeting, I could be a question. The uh, double hung windows on North Elevation are those historic the ones that are being replaced? We so the we are are you talking about the north or the south? North, the north elevation. The north elevation. The, yeah, they're they're not historic, so we're replacing them. But previously on the, the previous conceptual review, you guys were questioning the ones on the south elevation. Those ones are historic. We originally wanted to replace them, but since then we are now keeping them according to the National the Landmark Preservation Lady who came back out to the site and said just to keep them and restore them. So we're proposing to keep those ones since they are historic. But we're still replacing the ones on the north side. Yes. Brent? I appreciate I know we had a lengthy discussion trying to figure out how to make this work. I appreciate the changes considering them and figuring out how to make it work. So thank you. I'm sure it wasn't an easy task. From my point of view, I think you did an excellent job. I think you've accomplished what we addressed in our lengthy discussion last time, much appreciated. I think the solution is excellent. And again, uh, great, great work on the, the 3D drawings are very helpful. Appreciate yeah. the film as well. Came a long way. Excellent. Our motion. Mr. Chairman, um, agenda item 21, GE-21-10-031-921 LaSalle Street. Adoption of the uh, approval of the application as submitted. So, a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Your application is approved as submitted. Thank you. Yeah. But last time it was worth it to get here. Yeah. I can't wait to see that reverse board and back. Yes. I really am looking forward to seeing it. Very creative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 22703 South 5th Street. Anyone here from 703 South 5th Street? Anyone here from 333 East Beck Street? Or 180 Thurman Avenue? Uh, go on to item number 23, which is conceptual. And I'm going to use myself on this one. 672 South 3rd Street, okay? And I'm going to, I'll remain until 630 in case this one is yeah. still here. Excuse me, brother. Yep. Definitely is not. Thank you. We got through all the procedures. Appreciate that. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah. Gentlemen, raise your right hands, please. Be solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Please state your names. Kevin Lee. Matthew Heisman. Thank you very much. Item number 23, TV 2110 033, 672 South 3rd Street. Proposed work description. The following changes are proposed for the St. Mary's main classroom building, an addition of approximately 14,030 square feet. Proposed to accommodate additional classroom space and social hall for St. Mary's Parish and School. Relocation of the rectory building, approximately 75 feet to the southwest to accommodate for the new addition. Proposed drive aisle, new playground located in front of property, add brick sidewalks, updated fencing, and new landscaping. Staff review of the St. Mary's School is a 1960s structure with a contemporary design. The structure is a contributing feature within the German Village Storm District. Staff would recommend the commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future meeting. No action is required. 
여러분 So do we have the ability to control the slide sequencing? No. Okay. Did you get the uh, presentation that yes. they send us? Can you yeah. get back to the first, uh, the first. The first slide? Hey, first, before we uh, get started, I'd like to introduce some of our team that's here that uh, traveled all this way. Um, let's see, we first have uh, Father Vince Nguyen, that's the pastor of St. Mary. Uh, on the father's left is uh, this is Gina Stahl, who is the principal of St. Mary's School. Um, to the right of the father is Mark Morna. He's built many wonderful structures in Columbus on the, on the front. Last but not least, Josh Comey, who is uh, part of the Director of Architecture okay. for MKC. So thank you very much for the team. And uh, with that, good afternoon, or good afternoon still. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to present our concept for expanding and improving the educational and community spaces for St. Mary campus. First off, uh, in terms of our agenda, um, we'll set the stage with our campus story and all with the campus story, um, you'll see an image which will get familiar together with the campus built structures themselves, since we'll be talking about them, not just the school. Um, with uh, to back down a little bit there with the agenda. With that, uh, we'll set the stage, campus stories, what we're experiencing that'll that'll uh, lay the founder the, the foundation for why why change why an improved campus. Matt will then talk about the existing conditions and how they translate into the needs the proposed changes that we're recommending. With that, let's uh, let's take a little walk um, with our campus. Um, first off, you'll see let's uh, this is the Third Street. View and let's pretend we're standing in front of the church. The uh, uh, there are three founding structures of the St. Mary's campus. St. Mary campus. Uh, the second is the church, and it is uh, constructed in 1868. Uh, has undergone five expand, five renovations. Of uh, the the last was uh, completed in 2017. Uh, to give a plug for Father Vince back there. If you haven't visited the uh, space, you should you should uh, do that. It is a uh, uh, wonderful, beautifully designed, and, uh, and the construction quality is very high. Wonderful space. Um, behind, going back to our uh, going back down to our view, if you could, getting ahead there. Uh, behind the church is the spec center, and the spec center is actually the first of the structures built on campus, 1865. It was a four room structure church to serve the church, the school and rectory needs. The importance there is uh, it has been renovated and recently in 2019 and renovated into the, the four original rooms or the current rooms and they're both renovated classrooms that have helped uh, with our capacity. Next on the right of the church, you'll see a building set back and that is the rectory, last of the founding structures and it, uh, it housed the clergy, and where the business of the church was stayed up with for many years. To the far right, um, on the south of the campus, is the 1955 elementary school. Um, tonight, that'll be the focus of our attention. And just to reflect a bit, if you think back at the name 1955 building, those uh, post-World War II uh, babies that were born, um, baby boom, they had kids needed a place for education. So that was the uh, motivation for the building, the construction of the school at that time. And, we're somewhat witnessing another wave of uh, Columbus, especially of growth, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, standing back in front of the church on the left, it's going to walk up north of uh, uh, north on third is the Berkeley Center, uh -huh. built in 1960, and it serves our uh, serves the parish offices and the many ministries of the of the parish. And of note on the front, if you're walking on Third Street, there's a beautiful prayer garden that was constructed in 2019. Last, if we walk up the balance of the way up Third Street, past a couple of residences and businesses across Sycamore, you will see the what was the old Third Street School that has been uh, that was purchased by the diocese, renovated, completed in early 2021, completed in January, and renovated uh, six classrooms and one science center. So additional capacity was added to our to our school. Um, before you go any further, I've got a question. I Seems like you're leaving part of the original campus out. Wasn't the old high school part of the original St. Mary's campus? 
Well, I think if I'm correct, the Berkeley Center was what I think the high school at the time, Girls High School, maybe bought it. At the time, was. You saw where one point five back there. That's now the single family residence on Mohawk Street. Wasn't that part of the original St. Mary's campus? Yes. Yes, it was. And uh, what's the era? When was that building? Because that was part of the campus, and now it's no longer. Right? Yes, it's it's on the uh, 1891 Sanborn map as listed at St. Mary's School, so it predates 1891. Okay. And it became a uh, business uh, from the from the diocese, and then finally was turned over was purchased as a private residence. Is is history. And all those years, it was a business. It was still a part of the the diocese and property. No, no. So it was sold. Many years ago, now. many years ago, yeah. yes. That's the campus. So moving ahead, so our, our campus story. First, good stewards of the community. For over 150 years, St. Mary has been a cornerstone of education for the German village and the greater south side. Along with the Stewart Street School and the Back Street School, the Back Street School is now a charter school. St. Mary provides a complete range of educational choices to our community and beyond. Of course, education is only part of our campus, um, of the role that our campus plays. Hosting events such as the Homecoming Festival, Farmer's Market, Village Lights, the Christmas Tree Sale, and programs like the St. Vincent, Vincent de Paul Society and Southside Community Food Pantry make it an indispensable community resource. This project will enhance our educational capabilities and our capacity to continue serving as stewards of our community. Two, student community. If you tour, uh, back down there. If you tour, second, that's the second point, student community. If you tour our educational facilities, you'll notice students that are energetic, positive, engaging. You will also notice a student body that epitomizes the socioeconomic racial and religious diversity of the Columbus community. Those students come to us from over 30 zip codes in the greater Columbus area, metropolitan area. They arrive with the same goal, to receive a quality education that's being supplied by the staff and uh, faculty of St. Mary. Capacity challenges. We've been fortunate to be growing. And since 2018, the academic year, we witnessed over a 40% increase in enrollment. This year we have over 400 students and we forecast a growth trajectory that's in the approaching years of near 500 students that we must be prepared to support. As I talked earlier, we've been addressing that, that growth challenge with the additions of the spec center classrooms and the middle school classrooms, 10 total classrooms that have helped our capacity. However, even with those additions, demand exceeds capacity, where in some where in some grades there's a waiting list for enrollment. Our main educational facility, as I said, was built in 1955 and has never undergone a major renovation. While the school staff has worked diligently to keep things to date, the building no longer conforms to current codes or educational standards. Accessibility, safety systems, and capacity can only be addressed with a significant modernization and renovation and expansion. And, and that's the 1955 building? Yes, sir. Okay. The main school, the southernmost property of the campus. Additionally, regarding functionality and educational facility design, what we now know about education is learning isn't constrained solely to classrooms. Extended and flexible learning spaces are required to meet each child's specific needs. Moreover, project-based and peer-to-peer -peer learning is equally important. The goal of this project is to create a state-of-the-art 21st century learning environment. Outdoor play and green spaces. Also critical to, child, to a child's development are outdoor recreational opportunities and the appreciation of the natural world. Our project proposes to create outside learning spaces and play areas to replace our dated and very, and our very inadequate spaces. 
Large population meeting and gathering spaces last on this slide. Since 1955, the gymnasium has served as the parish and school's only large gathering space on campus. The parish is in need of a large gathering space and current projected student body requires a dedicated cafeteria, allowing the gymnasium to serve as, a, as full time as a recreational facility. Our proposed 250 seat cafeteria slash social hall will address this need and be available for use by the parish and the community. Next slide. So to, to bring those, uh, to bring our campus story together, I've outlined the catalyst for change needed for our campus. And before turning it over to Matt, I'd like to circle back to the project's key drivers. There are four of them. Number one, the current and projected growth of our student body requires expanded facilities, including separation of cafeteria and gymnasium function. The condition of our main education building requires substantial redesign to allow it to serve our students now and into the future. Appropriate space for outdoor recreation and, inter and interaction with nature are important factors for childhood development. And lastly, pedestrian and vehicle safety, along with neighborhood traffic frustrations, are also critical issues requiring immediate and lasting solutions. Great. So um, we showed the elevation of the uh, streetscape on 3rd Street earlier. This is the yeah. plan that would indicate um, some of the spec center, which was also mentioned. And then just to the east of the spec center is the, um, the original school building we talked about earlier. Um, as the St. Mary's school and parish continue to grow with the community, additional and updated facilities are needed to accommodate this growing enrollment. Uh, while the St. Mary's school staff has worked diligently uh, to keep the building up to date, uh, certain aspects are not in conformance with current building codes, as Kevin alluded to. The building exhibits accessibility challenges and safety shortcomings. Uh, that can only be rectified with a significant alteration um, as well as sensitive additions. As with the interior of the, ex uh, interior of the existing school building, outdoor learning spaces are also dated and limited. The existing conditions on campus present safety concerns for all visitors, uh, including unsafe walking conditions and access for the people in the community. Currently, the sole outdoor K through five play area is in the parking lot behind the school. It occupies the same space as parking and moving cars, which are separated only by portable orange cones. The queuing of cars entering the campus on Lazelle Street causes a significant nuisance for the residents of that street. The proposed plan continues to use Lazelle only as an exit, thereby eliminating the congestion and gridlock that frequently occurs on Lazelle and Frankfurt intersection. While renovated and new academic space is needed, potential locations for the expansion are limited. As noted earlier, the growth of the school and the parish is imminent. St. Mary's Parish is experiencing dramatic growth with this year's participation at nearly 700. As the diocese explores consolidation plans, there is an immediate and concerning lack of space to accommodate parish needs, in addition to community and school needs. The proposed 250 person cafeteria social hall is therefore designed to serve the school, the parish, and the community. As such, expansion is ne necessary. Um, while being respect respectful of the school's neighbors and the German village community, located in the landlocked urban neighborhood, creative solutions are required. But to be respectful of the rhythm and open space along 3rd Street, this plan maintains the main education building's facade line. Doing so means that the only location for potential expansion is in the rear parking lot, as indicated there. We are proposing to renovate and expand educational community spaces. This includes the following, a versatile and adaptable multi-purpose space, a dedicated full kitchen, 21st century learning spaces, outside play and learning areas, and redefined site circulation. Of great benefit to the German village community are gathering spaces, such as the planned cafeteria social hall. This project strengthens the historic partnership between St. Mary's and the German village community. From the outset of this project, improved and overhauled site circulation has been a priority. The three primary goals for improving the site are as follows. Provide a net parking gain, improve safety and connections between buildings, create distinct interrelationships between academic and parish spaces. Improving site circulation and access requires a minor relocation of the rectory. 
The rectory would move to the southwest and its rear section removed. We believe this section to be an early addition and not part of the original structure. Moving the building slightly to the south is for safety and to the west is to allow for expansion of the main education building. Relocation also allows for construction of the cafeteria social hall, creation of the entry plaza, and an expansion of the entry drive and drop off. Relocation of the rectory minimally alters its relationship to the third street and brings it somewhat closer to the public way, thus enhancing the public's enjoyment of this piece of German villages heritage while maintaining the rhythm of open space along the main thoroughfare in front of the school. This provides the best opportunity to allow for the much needed addition of academic space and the social hall. Additionally, the campus's realignment provides for 18 additional on-site parking spaces. Moving historic buildings has been proven to be safe and reliable. Uh, this was demonstrated nearby when a brewery district building was moved from High Street uh, to Front Street, a considerably greater distance than the 75 feet proposed here. Relocations of buildings has been necessary technique utilized in a variety of cases, and we are proposing a minor distance on a flat site that will be safe and reliable. If you've never seen the uh, the public television show Nova depicting the moving of the uh, of the Gatehead Lighthouse on Martha's Vineyard, you should go watch it sometime. Yeah. It's a it's a minor miracle. Yeah, and that's not it. Yeah, similarly though. Yeah, it's shorter and bigger. Yeah. <laughs> did you see it when they moved the house from High Street to Front? They did. Yeah. And off. Tires blue and electricity shorted out. I'm not saying it's your application. Right, right. It was complicated. We're not going to hire them. Well, it was <laughs> it was it was <laughs> unknown conditions. We'll say yeah. that. It was more. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we digress. I'm sorry. Next slide. Um, so let's talk about the site circulation. Um, the pattern for vehicles and pedestrians therefore um, dramatically increases the safety of the children, uh, staff, faculty, and visitors. Our proposal creates a traffic pattern um, that is safer and moves more efficiently, uh, which speeds up drop off and pick up while relocating stacking from Lazelle and Frankfurt to on site locations. This is achieved with controlled access, creating clear, concise, and ordered means of circulation with a dedicated two line entry drive with additional drop off and pick up areas. With cars entering the campus only from 3rd Street and exiting via Lazelle and Mohawk, traffic will flow more smoothly and consistently. Buses will now drop off and pick up in front of the church, which is centrally located on the larger campus now. Doing so allows for smoother and regulated vehicular ingress uh, onto campus that does not interfere with the buses. Moreover, dedicated crosswalks and paths are created from each of these prescribed areas. One of the main improvements to the third street side of the school is a new recreation area and outdoor learning space. Uh, with this plan, there is no need for students to play in the parking lots during the day. With the inclusion of growth gardens and outdoor learning spaces, this plan provides much needed extending learning environments while still enabling St. Mary to host community events. From a planning perspective, a primary feature of the renovation of the main education building is a creation of a single controlled entrance. Located on the north side of the building, the new entrance features a central and open plaza, one that provides an accessible and equitable entrance for visitors arriving either from 3rd Street to the east or um, to the parking lot to the west, that's inverted, uh, either from 3rd Street to the west or the parking lot to the east. The centralized locations allows for controlled access to the school, increasing safety and security of students, and outdoor gathering areas for extended learning, field trips, and other events. As part of the plan, the sidewalk immediately in front of the school also will be improved. The brick path will be continued throughout the third street frontage, as you can see there in front of the church on the bottom picture, the top is the existing conditions. And the stone and wrought iron fence will also be continued to create a uniform delineation to the campus. This fence will match the height of that in front of the church and will also ensure children's safety on the site. For the school building itself, most of the original footprint is maintained except for a small addition to the southwest. 90% of the original walls remained at the same location. Um, this is also true of building heights. Uh, the proposed early concept maintains the parapet and coping height of the main education building. The addition of the cafeteria social hall seen here also is respectful of nearby eve and roof heights. 
Its eave is only one and a half stories or 15 feet, which is shorter than all other buildings on campus. Its peak height is also shorter than all non-flat roof buildings on campus. That includes the Berkeley, the church, the rectory, the middle school, and the spec center. Uh, the existing school is being reorganized to meet the educational needs of the school today and into the future. Each grade level will now have two classrooms. A multimedia commons area called the hub will also serve as a campus library. Other extended learning spaces are provided within the school. To achieve these goals while keeping new buildings and additions to a minimum, the design needs to be efficient. Using the slightly modified footprint, we can grow from nine classrooms to 12. Accomplishing this required a reconfiguration of interior non-load bearing walls, which do not align with the existing windows and pilasters in the facade. The preliminary scheme features two horizontal uh, runs of traditional double hung windows that maintain the existing head and sill height of the existing windows. Next slide, please. While aligning with the new walls behind. The iconic statue of St. Mary will be refurbished, cleaned, and reinstalled. The design also embraces the rhythm and regularity of the existing facade. In summary, the St. Mary renovation project is a necessary undertaking with three critical aspects. First, a mindful response to growth and needs challenge. Second, safety and welfare of stakeholders and residents. Third, improved access to outdoor areas. We anxiously look forward to hearing your feedback and continuing to redefine and refine the details of our project with your guidance and input. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to lead our conversation off with the fact that unfortunately you only have three commissioners here and you're not going to get the benefit of the other two plus our missing one that's not appointed. So going forward, you're going to get guidance here from three, but that doesn't necessarily give you a good picture of how the commission may vote in the end. So I'm trying to give you a heads up on that. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So plan accordingly um, and strategize how you want to take it, take it on to, to, for your yeah. final approval. Chairman, I also, so we, we have the unusual situation that we know we're going to lose one of the four commissioners who are, who is here at 630 and not have a quorum. So we're going to have to end our meeting before then. So that's another drop. Well, let me ask, these are conceptual reviews. Well, and I'm, that's what I was going to, I'm not sure how, I think we can probably continue the discussion, but I think we probably have to but formally caveat. adjourn yes. before that. And that would end our conversation, you're correct. So it's tricky. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, and to all the other people here, I apologize for we tried to do our best. So uh, he is correct. We, we when our fourth commissioner that provides us quorum leaves at six thirty, we will have to close the meeting. Uh, with, with the question was that so um, if we're not finished with our session by that six thirty time, mindful of time, um, would we be allowed then to come for the kind of special interim meeting uh, for those? Absolutely, always. We will continue any uncompleted items right, thanks and, to the next. And we will make sure this is being conceptual, certainly. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah. I don't know what those arrangements are or whatever, but we're going to do the best we can. Sure. So, so, can we start? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've got a couple of concerns, um, the least of which is the, of my concerns is the, the logistics of moving the, the rectory, that's not in the guidelines. So you're on your own. I've seen enough big buildings be successfully moved like this that I know it can be done from an engineering uh, perspective. Um, so I'm nervous. First thing I'm nervous about is taking the early what probably is a historic addition off the rectory uh, we don't have the sanborn maps we don't hear in front of we don't know when but that's that's a concern that's probably a historic structure even though it was not original so it would roughly be the equivalent of taking the kitchen off of my house which is not original but 
is nevertheless historic. Um, I'm also a little nervous about turning what is now a pretty sizable appealing front yard into a playground. We, we call them recreation areas now, but it's playground. Um, so, it, and I can't help but think that if the diocese hadn't sold that darn high school however many years ago, this problem wouldn't exist. So it might be a self-created hardship situation. So I'm a little nervous about that. Um, and of course, that's you're proposing eliminating the time-honored tradition of Catholic school children playing in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, go ahead. <laughs> but so those are my broad general concerns. Okay. Well, ironically, I actually am not concerned about moving the rectory because I, I guess I've researched enough buildings that you know historically they were moved all the time. Uh, I'm also equally concerned about the additions in the back, uh, like how significant are they? Um, the thing that bothers me the most is the mid-century 1950s school getting completely erased, and th th that just bothers me a lot. That that I think it's like what happened to the Wendy's downtown. Well, I think that 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 came up earlier when we talked about preserving the clunk. It's right. perverting the, the 50s vibe is now a historic characteristic. Of that structure right. that you're so like the, the, talking the, about eliminating the, the campus too. That's sort of just been eliminated. Although I will confess to you, since father's here, <laughs> uh, that that my Catholic elementary school had a very similar fifties vibe to it. So I might have some latent affection for that <laughs> architectural style. Uh, my comments are um, kind of aligned with yours, but kind of a little stronger, I think. Um, I, I am concerned about taking off the back edition, the early edition of the, uh, the Vance. Um, I need to know more about that and warrant that. I also look at part of our task is not only preserving the architecture, but the structure vibe of the whole historic district. And part of that is looking at masking, et cetera, of it, but it also looks at the voids. And the voids between spaces and activities and stuff are important. And I'm speaking specifically here at the front yard in front of the manse. And I think to lose that is not, in my view, permissible. That contributes to the vibe of Third Street and it contributes to the overall value. For, for instance, what, 1872, it's had a front yard. I, I can't warrant, I can't justify you moving that forward and changing that front of the street. That's just historically changing everything to me. Um, and I, I'm just not there with that. Um, it's like green space that you can It's use, green space. You can yeah. Play space. Yeah, so that's that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm going to address the 1955 architecturally designed elementary school. It was fine in 1955. It is now contributing as is it is fine now also and doesn't warrant being changed or modified in any way. I certainly know that there are means and ways of subdividing spaces up behind ribbon walls because I do it in office state towers all the time. I don't do it personally, but I, I'm familiar with it. So I can't justify changing the front of St. Mary's Elementary School either, or even putting that addition on the southwest corner. That to me has to stay intact. That is part of the history and the culture and everything else, not only of St. Mary's, but of German Village. It contributes, it's part of it. Um, the back. I am more open to what you need to do back there and how to get around it. And I think that's more to be addressed, but those are my main concerns and mainly because they affect what you're planning. I understand what your problems are, what your issues are. 
our issue is to preserve and protect what's built, and that includes the voids between those spaces. So that's kind of where I'm at. May I ask a question? Yeah. So we anticipated this discussion, of course. Uh, oh yeah. And, and sort of prep for a lot of this feedback, and you know, um, certainly we will look into revising this. Um, some options to accommodate some of your concerns and questions. Um, I'm curious uh, what classifies a playground versus an open space that children can use for recreation. Um, is, is there anything in the guidelines? Is it any built structure? Um, in other words, we would like the children to play out there and use that space. And we're also cognizant of not having a playground on third street. We're looking to provide that flexibility. I I'll, I'll let them answer also, but my opinion, I'm, I'm between that 100% asphalt out there and high gym equipment and stuff is disruptive to what was there originally. But if you can keep it low and active and subdued with landscaping and the trees that are there and stuff, I'm certainly interested in, in seeing what you're proposing. And as Teresa said, you've got a big front yard in front of the manse also that you could use, you know, pursue that. So that's another issue. It's still open space with a different function. That's my answer. Mr. Chairman, before we go any further with this, could I move that we continue all of the items on our agenda that we have not uh, made a decision about to the next meeting, whenever that may turn out to be. And, and the items that we didn't address. Yes, the ones yes. we skipped over yeah. as well as yeah. the ones. Is that a motion? Yes, that's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Still got a couple of minutes for we the order. So you guys vote with them. And we're not voting. We're not voting. He can vote on that. He's not recused from that. Yeah. I have to vote on the continuing steps of that application, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done that from back then. <laughs> <laughs> I have to vote on the, the adjourning club. Yeah. yeah. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Ah, uh, yes. Which we're going to have to do. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 For those in the audience, I let everybody know that I had to do it earlier. It was others that said today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, sometimes I truly apologize. It's circumstances of the time. I really do. So basically the text from what we said okay, there, just described the project yep, in more detail. Good. Thank you. Do you guys feel like you've gotten at least a little bit of a sense of what we're concerned about? Absolutely. Okay. Part of what we're also looking for mm -hmm. was some feedback so that we can come back again yeah, right. and further clarify or further answer your concerns. And hopefully we'll have more commissioners that can give you a better feedback. And that goes for everybody in the audience also in the back, the conceptuals and the applications that we didn't get to. Um, we're going to try to see if we can't push somehow to get all of us back together in some way, same basis that's legitimate with proper yeah. notification way before the November meeting. I think that's our duty if we can make it happen. Yes. So in other words, work out all this yeah. Yeah. I, to be honest with you, I would presume so. The question is, Whatever the city we, requires. We, yeah, we were we were not able to do any pre-planning. We did not know. I did not know about this until four o'clock. An email went out today, this afternoon, sometime, saying we were going to be short commissioners. We barely had a quorum. Let's keep going. Um, unfortunately, you only got four out of the six that are available to give conceptual reviews. We passed as much as we could, and we have people with COVID symptoms. Yeah, right? which is that why just, that just emerged. Yeah. So I again I call prayers. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, we could get you to bring back holy names. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah, I'm Good. You did very good.